Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. As well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad, they may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS Springtown, Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Howard Kakwadash. And um, the Spirit just really had me uh, meditating on um, moving in the fear of the Lord. All right. And uh, no matter what, all right, we cannot lose sight of the fear of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. All right, we cannot lose sight of moving in the fear of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai and our decision making and our, you know, our uh, everyday walk and our thoughts and so on and so forth. All right, it is very important for us to not um, get in a, a, a spirit of complacency, all right, and thinking that, all right, the Lord won't bring judgment upon us. All right, there's great men, all right, that were beloved, that are beloved in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that we read throughout the scriptures, all right, whom the Lord uh, severely judged, all right, because of not moving in the fear of him in particular instances, all right. So, you know, we're in the flesh, uh, we are going to make mistakes, all right, but uh, regardless of, you know, Adawan Ratiza, you know, uh, we are, you know, hopeful members of the elect, all right, and. You know, we don't know if we are of that number. All right. That's why the scripture says give diligence to make your calling and election. Sure. But, you know, just to, you know, put it in perspective, even with men that we know are of the elect. All right. King David. All right. Uh, Josiah, you know, uh, just various examples that I'm, you know, thinking of. All right. These are great men that uh, um, whom the Lord uh, brought judgment upon. All right. You know, even the example of uh, Moses. All right. Who, of course, you know, will be of the elect. All right. When it came down to when he was uh, tearing to circumcise. All right. Uh, his son. All right. The Lord was about to uh, kill him. All right. The Lord was about to kill him, man. So, you know, these are just things we want to put in perspective. It doesn't matter. You know, we, we can't get complacent. All right. We have to always move in the fear of the Lord and. You know, uh, so without further ado, you know, I'm going to just jump into a grab some precepts. Um, I got this up uh, to start off Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 it says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully setting them to do evil. All right. And, you know, these precepts all right, uh, we oftentimes, you know, uh, just apply it. Well, uh, uh, when we read these things, you know, we're maybe out there teaching and you know, uh, we have to keep in mind that these words apply to us first and foremost. All right. You know, we don't want to move in this spirit. All right. Of an individual. All right. That because judgment doesn't happen uh, quickly. All right. Or immediately after something has been committed or whatever the case may be, that we just think that, you know, uh, we're fine and we continue to move in a spirit that the Lord isn't pleased with. All right. Reading this again, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. And the scriptures even talk about Noah's evil for our souls and giving out thyself unto it. All right. So, you know, it may not particularly be something that may be directly going off. It's a sin in the scriptures. All right. You know, but uh, we know uh, what we need to cut cut down on or our vices or whatever the case may be. We know what's evil for our soul. All right. And if we continue to, you know, um, and give ourselves over to things that are evil for our soul. All right, judgment can be brought upon us. All right, and the Lord is merciful enough to grant us more uh, warnings. All right, whether it's the you know the Lord alerting us in our own spirit, you know, or through the brotherhood, all right, or through lessons, you know, or so on and so forth. And then the Lord has us go through different experiences that you know uh, show us that we need to be moving in a certain spirit. All right, you know. So these warnings, you know, the Lord is merciful enough to. To, to be patient with us, all right, and to give us space of repentance, but we don't want to tarry to turn to the Lord, as the scripture says in the book of Sirach, the fifth chapter. Another precept that it oftentimes, you know, could be used to, you know, speak about, you know, these jakes that, you know, just walking by the camp, but nah, that's, 
you know, that applies to us first and foremost, or these words are to us first and foremost, and the word of the Lord is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, all right? All right, so yeah, others get cut by this word, but we're supposed to be the ones getting cut first and foremost and making those adjustments, all right, so that we can move in uh, in a spirit that's uh, pleasing to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. But it says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. All right, so uh, we want to know what's evil for our soul and um, give not thyself unto it, as the scripture says, and we want to have a sense of urgency, especially in these times that we're in. All right, you know, uh, definitely a sense of urgency, you know, because, you know, Lord's will, I'll grab it, but judgment is beginning with us. All right, judgment begins at our uh, at the house of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, so us that are in the know. All right, the scriptures even talk about um, the servant that knew the master's will and did it not, he shall be beaten with many stripes. All right. So these are precepts. All right. That speak to us first and foremost, man. OK, these are threats. All right. That Yahweh is giving us his servants first and foremost. See, these threats that the Lord sends out aren't just to two thirds and, you know, just wicked niggas out there. Nah, these threats start off with us. And if we aren't moving in the spirit, you know, uh, um, that is uh, pleasing in the sight of Yah, Bashim Yahweh If we aren't making these adjustments or whatever the case it may be, if we aren't moving in the fear of Yah, Bashim Yahweh all right, the Lord uh, uh, can have us go through a lot of shit. Okay. You know, He can have us go through a lot of stuff, man. All right. A lot of tribulation, a lot of hell. All right. Even if, you know, we are of the elect. Okay. That doesn't exempt us. And out of one righteous out, we are part of that number. And like I mentioned, you know, uh, we don't know if we are, but that doesn't exempt us from, you know, the, the Lord chastising us and, and, and bringing sore punishments upon us, you know, to get us in line. So, you know, we have to be mindful of these things, man. But Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil, though a sinner do do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged. And once again, applying it to us, all right, there may be certain things that, you know, uh, uh, where we're, we're not, we're, um, how is it worded in that Sirach, the fifth chapter, I had just quoted it, all right, putting that off from day to day. So there's certain things that we could be putting off, all right? And if we continue to put those things off that the Lord is alerting us to, all right, it gets to a point to where the Lord, you know, he can get to a point to where it's like, all right, enough is enough, all right? Then judgment comes, Okay. And when the Lord brings down judgment, man, it's not pretty, all right? You know, it's, it's it's not pleasant, you know? So that's why the scriptures talk about in the book of 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the 11th chapter, says, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged, all right? So if we make these corrections, all right, first and foremost, you know, as the Spirit is alerting us to certain things and we can make that adjustment before it gets to, you know, escalate to the Lord having to bring a, a severe punishment upon us, or right, if we just take heed into you know, the, uh, the the brothers around us, the councils and so on and so forth, we can avoid going through a lot of hell. All right. The same thing with Jonah. See, if Jonah would have just hearkened to the voice of the Lord. All right. When you read in the story of Jonah, he wouldn't have had to be in the belly of hell as it is written. All right. He was in the belly of the fish. All right. He said he was in the belly of hell. So that was some affliction for what was it? Uh, three days. All right. Three nights. Right. All right. He had to go through that experience, okay, and that was to uh um and and ended up and you know having to still do the will of the Lord, all right, but that could have been avoided if he would have just been obedient. So just applying it into the different things that we go through, uh, if we just remain obedient, then we can avoid going through certain afflictions and hell. All right, that's unnecessary. All right, if we just hearken to the voice of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So it says, though, sinner, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. So those that are moving in the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to go well with them, right? Verse 13, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. And why is that? Because he feareth not before Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so we don't want to lose sight of the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because if we lose sight of that, it will not go well with us. All right, you know. So it says also in the book of um, uh, Sirach, um, the first chapter, 
how it shall go well with them at the last, that fear before him, um, roughly paraphrasing it, Sirach, the first chapter. And there's so many precepts that go into the fear of the Lord, man, showing you how important, how essential it is, because the fear of the Lord, as it says in this chapter as well, drive it the way sin. So it keeps us from doing things that are displeasing in the sight of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. All right. And therefore, we can avoid punishment. All right. We can avoid judgment. We can avoid, all right, uh, uh, you know, going through more hell. Sirach chapter one and verse uh, 13. Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last and he shall find favor in the day of his death. All right. So, you know, it says it shall go well with them that fear the Lord. All right. So that's why we have to continue to abide in the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Remembering the power that we're dealing with. All right. It says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. All right. The scriptures call the Lord an austere man. The austere means to be severe and stern. All right. It says that the Lord is a great king and terrible upon the earth. All right. <laughs> you know, so this is the power that we're dealing with. OK. You know. So moving in the fear of the Lord keeps us in safety. All right. Keeps us within that hedge. But moving outside of that. Then that same great and terrible power that, it, you know, uh, that is defending us. All right. <laughs> could turn his wrath towards us. And we don't want to be on that side. Right. So this is Proverbs chapter 23 and verse uh, 17. It says, um, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh all the day long. All right. So we have to move in the fear of the Lord, man, all the day long in our thoughts and our decision making. All right. That's something that I pray for. You know, I, I specifically I pray to the Lord. Baba Kusha, I pray that I all right, think, reason and move in the fear of you. All right. You know. So, you know, man, it's. This is very important. This is very essential, especially in these days that we're entering into. All right. There's certain mistakes, man, that in, in a certain vibration that we could have been moving in at one point that the Lord winked at that in this time, especially, you know, uh, how close we are to Yahweh Shai actually returning that he may not wink at. All right. There's certain mistakes that the Lord may not, you know, uh, suffer us to continue to make. All right. So we hope for mercy. All right. Always, right? We always hope for the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, but we have to have a healthy balance of, all right, moving in the fear of the Lord and hoping for that mercy, man. All right, but uh, Sirach chapter 18 and verse uh, 27, it says, it says, uh, a wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense, but a fool will not observe time. All right, so a wise man is going to move in the fear of the Lord, man. All right, that's why the scriptures talk about in the book of Philippians, the second chapter. This is uh, Philippians chapter two and verse 12. All right. It says uh, Philippians two and 12. It says, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. So this is the vibration we need to be moving in, man. All right. Moving in the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So that the Lord can continue to delight in us. All right. You know, uh, so let's go ahead and grab. Um, I'm going to grab this in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. All right. Going into uh, Noah, you know, and when you read once again, man, when you read throughout these, these scriptures, man, the Lord, his threats. All right. They ain't once again, they ain't just talking to a wicked nigga that out that's out there that don't know nothing, man. All right. You read throughout the book of Revelation. The Lord was threatening the churches. OK. He was telling churches, those that were in the right doctrine, uh, teaching the correct things, right? You know, those letters were sent to the churches, all right? And there were certain things that had to be addressed, but the Lord was threatening those churches, man. All right? He said, I'll remove that candlestick. All right, I'll fight with you with the sword of my mouth. I'll cast you into great tribulation. I'll kill her children with death, <laughs> you know? I'm going to come upon you as a thief, right? If you don't repent and turn from certain things. So the Lord ain't playing around with us, man. All right? He said, I'm going to come upon you as a thief. And a thief comes to do what? To take everything, all right? To kill and destroy on a sudden, all right? <laughs> you know, in your comfort and your security, going back into that in the book of Sirach. Sirach, as a matter of fact, let me hit that real quick. Sirach chapter five. All right, I quoted it. Um, Sirach chapter five and verse um, five. Concern or propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, his mercy is great. 
he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and this ind indignation rested upon sinners. So we don't want to move in this vibration of like, oh, not a, you know, the Lord's just going, you know, forgive me, just be merciful. And you moving outside of the fear of the Lord, just expecting the Lord to have mercy. All right. You know, that's how these Christians move. You know, they go out and do all the manners of wickedness and then just think the Lord is just obligated to deliver them and save them. Like, nah, all right, we don't know. Okay. All right. You don't think King Saul wanted uh, uh, mercy? All right. Even when uh, Samuel had told him that he was going to be, that he was rejected. All right. You know, when Samuel told him that he was rejected uh, after that, you know, he was crying out, man. And the Lord, the Lord's like, nah, nah, hey, I, nah, he's rejected, man. Fuck that. You know, he continued in the spirit. Of, he was continuing in the spirit of rebellion. All right. And the Lord got to a point to where he was fed up. And then it was nothing that he could do at that point. It ain't matter how much he wanted to cry to the Lord. He even went to go worship the Lord after that. All right. And the Lord still wasn't hearing him, man. So that's a fearful position to be put in. All right. So that's why we have to be moving in this type of fear, knowing that like, look, man, hey, we, we just, <laughs> you know, we just can't be doing whatever we want and just thinking the Lord is just going to be cool with it, man. All right. Anyway, Sirach 5 and verse 7, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. So this applies to us. All right. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. OK, what, however that presents itself are right? certain things that we may need to turn from or, you know, we need to uh, work with a spirit of urgency to correct, you know, and adjust and fix. Right. We don't want to tarry to do these things. Right. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So we don't want this to to uh, we don't want to fall into this category. All right. And the thing is, is as we read in these precepts, man, there has to be a, a, a faith to believe that these threats that the Lord ain't playing around. Going back into this example in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, Hebrews 11 and verse seven. All right. It says, by faith, Noah being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet move with fear. So it starts off with faith, the belief in these words, all right, the belief in what the Lord has said, all right? So we can't say, oh, yeah, you know, we believe the destruction, you know, it's coming in, nuclear destruction and so on and so forth, but we don't believe, all right, in these threats, all right? <laughs> you know, these other threats, you know, as far as what can happen to us as well, all right? The Lord wasn't playing around once again with those churches when you read in the book of Revelation, the, you know, the, the first three chapters, man. All right. The Lord wasn't playing if they wasn't turning from certain things that the Lord was going to, you know, uh, uh, fulfill. All right. <laughs> His word and bring the, the 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 various, you know, threats that he was mentioning. All right. Removing the candlestick. All right. You know, spew you out of the mouth. That's being rejected. Right. So once again, there's a balance of fear that we have to continue to move in as we are hoping for the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. But it says um, by faith. Noah being warned of the most high things not as not seen as yet move with fear. So Noah believed in the destruction that could come. All right. Noah believed that, man, look, if I look, if I don't do what the Lord said, if I ain't building this ark, I will get caught up in this shit. All right. You know, so we have to move in that same vibration. Like, man, if we ain't applying these things or whatever, that we will get caught up in this shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Once again, has to have to be, <laughs> we can't lose sight. Can't lose sight of the fear. Yah, Bashim, Yah, So it says, uh, move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. All right. So, you know, Mo, Noah, all right. He, he was moving in the fear of Yah, Bashim, Yah, man. So we got to have that healthy balance of fear and hoping for mercy. As a matter of fact, just to bring in, all right, that balance, you know. All right, because the Lord is a terrible power, but yet it mentions him being full of mercy. But that mercy is going to be extended to those that are moving in this vibration. <laughs> All right, as we're going to read through the precepts, so Rock 14 and 2, blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. All right, so, you know, we don't want to condemn ourselves. All right, we make a mistake. All right, and we fear the Lord and we're like, man, nah, man, fuck, man, Lord just going to destroy my ass. Nah, the scripture says how the Lord delights in those that hope in his mercy. All right. So all we can do is like it says in the book of Sirach, the 17th chapter, Sirach chapter 17 and verse. Uh, uh, let me just type it in. It might be the 14th chapter as well. All right. 
All right, this is uh, Sirach 17 and 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So this is all we can do. All right. You know, we make a mistake. We cry out to the Lord. We beg for mercy. Right. All right. And then what? We offend less. You know, we make the adjustments and we try not to make those same mistakes again. All right. You know, so that's why the scriptures talk about. Well, let me continue to read. It says, uh, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Turn again to the most high. And turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. All right. So, you know, um, it is what we have to do. All right. The scriptures talk about in the book of uh, Psalms. All right. Um, it says uh, a just man falls uh, seven times or a just man falleth uh, seven times and riseth up again. All right. So we cry out to the Lord. We beg for mercy. And that's why the scriptures call us uh, prisoners of hope. All right, because the Lord can have mercy upon whom he has mercy on, man. All right. So we have to have the balance of knowing like, hey, the Lord don't owe us nothing. But at the same time, the Lord said that if we're doing these particular things, that he will grant us salvation. OK, so it's a fine line that we're walking and hoping and fear, hoping in the mercy of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh to be shed, you know, shed uh, um, to be upon us. All right. Moving in the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, and this is who he delights in, those that are moving in that vibration. Isaiah the 66th chapter. To this man will I look. To them that is of a broken and contrite spirit and trembleth at his word. All right, you're broken and contrite because it's like you fucked up. You, you know, we make mistakes, and then we know the Lord can bring judgment upon us. All right, so that puts you in the spirit of just crying out, hoping for mercy, and he delights in us being in that type of spirit, as opposed to a nigga that's just out there doing whatever the fuck, you know? And he just moved, you know, <laughs> and 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 he ain't crying out, you know, or he just, ah, oh, you know, the Lord, uh, he don't really feel bad and ain't, he don't have no godly sorrow. All right. The Lord ain't finna extend his mercy to a nigga like that. All right. His mercy upon those that fear him, man. All right. So um, going back to uh, I, I think I finished that Sirach the 14th chapter. All right. So let's uh, let's grab this in the book of Psalms 103. All right. This is Psalms chapter uh, 103. Psalm 103. And uh, we'll start at verse 13. All right. So it says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. All right. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. So the Lord knows, man. He, he knows that we're going to make mistakes. He knows that we're in the flesh, right? Even the example of King David, all right? King David, man, it said how he moved wisely in all his doings. He moved in the fear of the Lord, all right? But yet we see that there's instances where, all right, where he made mistakes, all right? But when he even made those mistakes, that didn't cause him from falling from his hope in the Lord, all right? Going back to that Sirach, the 14th chapter, Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who's not fallen from his hope in the Lord, man. As a matter of fact, Spirit told me to grab this precept. Those that hope in his mercy, man. That's who he delights in. All right. We're hoping in his mercy while we're moving in the fear of the Lord. We're not hoping in his mercy and doing whatever we want. All right. Like a Christian. All right. Hoping in his mercy. But, you know, we're not trying to obey his word. Right. This is um, uh, Psalms 33 and 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. All right. <laughs> it says uh, Psalms 147 and 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. So, you know, the Lord delights in us, you know, crying out, begging and hoping for that mercy, man. Okay. As we continue to move in the fear of the Lord and as we continue to go through this process of offending less and so on and so forth. Right. So um, going. Um, let's see where we at. Uh, uh, let's go back to this. Man, what was the previous precept I had? Up? All right. Psalms 103 and verse uh, 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. All right, so 
once again, reiterating the point that, you know, the Lord's mercy is upon those that fear him. Right. It says to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. So we're actually applying these words. All right. Fighting to apply it, you know, striving. All right. Even though we come short. At times, right, we're still fighting. We're still trying to offend less. We're trying to improve. We're trying to get better. All right, getting closer to Yah, Bashem, Yah, Bashem, applying these precepts, right? This is the vibration we have to be moving in. We can't lose sight of the fear of Yah, Bashem, Yah, Bashem, man, okay? As if the Lord won't bring uh, <laughs> judgment upon us, all right? And moving in this vibration as if he won't do good or neither will he do evil, okay? Because it gets to a point to where that grace, all right, where the Lord was winking at certain things or whatever the case it may be, get to the point to where the Lord gets fed up and brings judgment upon us. All right. You know, so going back to that Ecclesiastes 8, I'll, I'll end it off with that again. All right. That we started off with Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and 11. All right. It says, um, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully setting them to do evil. So, you know, let's not get caught up in that mentality, all right? Just thinking, all right, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't nothing happened to me, and so I can continue to, you know, do do what I've been doing. <laughs> you know, nah, all right, there's adjustments and there's a grace that the Lord grants us to fix things, man. All right, before it has to ex escalate to the Lord bringing a severe punishment upon us, man. All right, so uh, through the spirit, let me see if there was anything else that I wanted to hit, you know. Oh, yeah, let's end it off with this, as a matter of fact. All right. We read like five precepts. I pretty much say the same thing, but, <laughs> you know, it is written multiple times for a reason, right? Luke 1 and 50, it says, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Oh, as a matter of fact, through the spirit, you know, uh, Sirach uh, 1 and verse, uh, or Sirach 2 and verse, uh, uh, I'm going to start at verse uh, 6. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. So we have to continue to move in the fear of the Lord. The scriptures also say in the book of Sirach, distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art made poor. All right. Or thou art made low, roughly paraphrasing it. So we don't want to make haste and, and, you know, just make decisions outside of the fear of the Lord because, you know, we get nervous. Whatever the case may be, man, don't distrust. All right. We don't want to distrust the fear of the Lord. It's going to be well with us at the end. Continue to apply these precepts. Continue to move in the spirit. Right. It says, uh, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Right. So if we're moving in that vibration, contrite, broken spirit, moving in the fear of the Lord. All right. We can hope for mercy, man. These people, they don't they don't have that. They aren't moving in the fear of the Lord. OK, <laughs> that's why it's not going to go well with them. All right. It says, uh, ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So if we abide in the fear of the Lord, we will not be forsaken. We will not be rejected. All right. But that fear is going to continue to have us to grow. All right. Make adjustments and offend less. All right. It's going to drive away sin. All right. It's going to drive away wickedness. Right. So, you know, I'm going to end it right there through the spirit. Lord's what I was at a fine. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakurash, double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say shalom.